Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Early Literacy Storytime. I'm Miss Kay from the Hewitt Public Library. And this morning we'll get started with Hello Friends, right? Let's go. Hello Friends, Hello Friends, Hello Friends. It's time to say hello. So hello to you. And this week our theme is about the ocean. So the book I'm reading you is the Ocean Alphabet Book. So it is an ABC book and a nonfiction book where we can learn about different creatures that live in the ocean. Won't that be fun? I hope you enjoy it. The Ocean Alphabet Book by Jerry Pelota, illustrated by Frank Mazzola Jr. It's a Trumpet Club book by Scholastic. A is for alphabet book. A is also for Atlantic Ocean. The fish and other creatures in this book live in the North Atlantic Ocean. B is for bluefish. Everyone loves to catch bluefish because they love to fight, so they tug and tug and tug on that line. Their teeth are very, very sharp, so don't ever put your fingers in their mouths. C is for cod. Cod can be found everywhere in the North Atlantic Ocean. Some grow to be as big as a 10-year-old boy or girl. Wow, that's a big fish. D is for dogfish. They are also known as spiny dogfish. They are little sharks. Every dogfish has a barb on its back and a barb on its tail. E is for eel. Eels are slimy. Eels are long and thin like snakes. If you don't like to hold snakes, you probably wouldn't like to hold an eel. F is for fiddler crab. Most crabs have claws that are the same size. Fiddler crabs have one big claw and one tiny claw. G is for goosefish. A goosefish is not very pretty. It has lots of teeth. Its mouth is as wide as its body. Goosefish are also called monkfish. H is for haddock. A haddock looks like a, a lot like a cod. Behind the haddock's side fin, there's a dark spot that looks like a fingerprint. See, right there. I is for ink. Ink is not the name of the fish. Squid spray ink to scare away fish that attack them. J is for jellyfish. Jellyfish are soft, gooey, and see through. Their dangling arms can sting if you touch them. K is for killer whale. Killer whales are mammals. They are not fish. They are very beautiful and can jump completely out of the water. L is for lobster. Lobsters are reddish, green, and blue. When they are cooked, they turn bright red. They have two claws that can pinch. They have eight legs. They also have two antennas that help them find out where they are. That's how they feel their way where they are. M is for minnow. Minnows are little fish. Usually they're only as big as your fingers. They can be found in shallow waters, marshlands, and creeks. N is for the northern puffer. If you touch a puffer, it will blow itself up like a balloon. O is for octopus. The, this octopus is scary looking, but it will not hurt you. It has eight arms. Can you imagine shaking hands with an octopus? It would take all day. P is for periwinkle. We usually think of periwinkles as flowers, right? Well, these little animals are periwinkles. Periwinkles live inside shells. They can be found on rocks at low tide. Some people call them snails. Q is for quahog. Quahogs are clams that have hard shells. Seagulls manage to open them all by themselves. Small quahogs are called cherry stones and little necks. R is for redfish. Redfish are caught in very deep water. They are oily and lobstermen use them as bait to catch lobsters. S is for scallop. Scallops are like clams and they have pretty shells. There are many other creatures whose names begin with S. Sharks, sharks, sculpins, salmon, sand dollars, sunfish, schmelt, sea snails, skates, shrimp, and starfish. T is for tuna. Everybody has heard of tuna. 
When they grow up, they are almost as big as cars. I did not know that. I learned something today. U is for urchin. Urchins are round with hundreds of sharp little spines sticking out of their shells. If you are barefoot, mm, you better not step on one of those. V is for viperfish. Viperfish live in deep, dark waters. They have lights inside their mouths and along their sides to attract food. W is for wolffish. Wolffish have large teeth and strong jaws are open, or that are used to open their favorite foods, quahogs, scallops, clams, and mussels. We cannot think of any fish whose names begin with the letter X. Can you? Letter X is a funny letter. We hear its k sound at the end of words. When we see an X at the beginning of a word, it usually, well, it never sounds like an X. Oops, look over here, we found one. X is for Xiphius. See, it sounds like a Z, Xiphius. This is the scientific name for a swordfish. So a swordfish scientific name starts with an X. That sounds like a Z. A little confusing. Okay. Y is for yellowtail flounder. Yellowtails are flat fish with both eyes on one side of their heads. They are called yellowtails. Hmm. Because why? Well, because their tails are yellow. Z is for zillions. That's how many fish there are in the ocean. Zillions. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed my book, The Ocean Alphabet. We learned several things, didn't we? Well, time for us to say goodbye. Are you ready to sing? Let's sing. Let's get a wave ready. Here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Come visit me at the library. You take care. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Kristen Davis, and I am so excited to be here talking to you. I am a speech-language pathologist, and I work at the Speech and Language Clinic at Baylor University. I'm happy to be collaborating with the library to bring you some helpful tips on building your child's language. By helping to build your child's language, you're also helping them establish that foundation that they need for when they are ready to read. While you're reading a book, you can practice echo reading. Echo reading is exactly what it sounds like. You will have your child echo what you read. It won't be every line, but it will be books where there are lots of repetition. This helps give little ones more confidence in trying to read books. You are also showing them what it might sound like when they do start reading. To do this, all you would do is read a phrase and tell your child to copy what you say. Wait for responses and offer your encouragement and support. If your child doesn't jump in right away, that's okay. Just go to the next page and keep asking them to join in. Eventually, your child will want to jump in and help you read the books. I hope you found this tip helpful and I'll see you soon.